My name is Dr. Anne Wanjiko Muiro. You are course instructor. The unit code for this title is uh, BEP 2201. The unit title is Guidance and Counseling Education. I mean, the School of Education in the Department of Educational Psychology and Technology. I want to trust that you are well, and uh, I'm also well, I'm also doing great. And we meet once again for another continuing session. But before we begin, we need to focus a little bit on what we discussed during our last lesson. And in our last lesson, we were looking at the counseling process. And we were telling ourselves, when you are counseling a client, like now we are having COVID-19 or the coronavirus, which process or which stages will you take as a, as, as a teacher counselor? And we agreed and we said that you shall go through uh, four basic stages. And we say the first one is you have to identify the need for counseling. Why are you counseling this client? What is the issue that the client is bringing to you? That is very, very important. Like now you can say maybe this is a student uh, client uh, who is infected by the COVID-19. Or the parent or maybe a relative. And the student has come to you seeking for your help. So from there we said you have to proceed on and prepare for counseling. You know, you have to identify where is the room where you're going to cons um, where is the room that you're going to carry out your counseling session? How I do is the room? It must be silent. Um, what have you read down? Is there a cup of tea? Is there a cup of water for your client to be able to drink? Have you provided even sometimes even tissue in case your client uh, wants to cry or is overwhelmed by the issues I've had? You need to really prepare very well. And you must always remind the client, the student client, that this session you are going to have today, it must take between... Uh, 40 minutes uh, to one hour. That's something you must always agree from the beginning. You must enter into a contract uh, with the client. Then from there, we said our stage number three is you conduct the session. How will you conduct the session, my dear student? We said that uh, uh, it is you who is going to smoothen this environment because sometimes the client is tense. Uh, but we agreed we are not supposed to start by prayer because sometimes when you pray, and this client could be as very bitter with God. That if the issue of prayer or anything to do with God or anything to do with Allah, it has to come from the student, from the student client, but not you as a counselor. Let it come from them. So you have to know, and we said you need to be as flexible, as flexible as, uh, as possible. Uh, and uh, you go with the pace uh, of the client uh, depending on the issues that he or she has brought before your desk. And then we agree the last thing once all is settled and you have used all the required skills, we agree the last stage is you terminate. But as you terminate, we always say don't ignore the client. Find out one month after, uh, three weeks after, six months after, how is the client doing? Have they settled their issues? Has the relative got healed? Are they better depending on the issue that they have brought to you? And if you feel that there is need to have the counseling process again, we say it again, you strike it again and you start from the beginning. That is what we agreed in our last lesson. Uh, for today, uh, we are now going to look at the effective counseling skills or techniques that you're supposed to use in this process uh, from the beginning to the end, from the need all the way up to the preparation, up to the conducting of the session, and determining and follow up. Which techniques, which skills are you going to are you going to are you going to use? So for the for our lesson today, the objectives of the lesson will be we have to go back and remind ourselves what did we determine or what did we define the term counseling to be. Then we ask ourselves what are these counseling skills or what are these counseling techniques that you are talking about. And then we look at examples of skills or examples of techniques that you are, you are going to use uh, during uh, these counseling process or the counseling stages. And then we also f finalize by looking at some very important points that we are going to consider if our counseling session is going to be successful or, or not. So there are certain points that we need to consider uh, if our counseling uh, session is going to be successful. Now, in reminding ourselves about what we said the term counseling is, uh, we said that counseling is that act of helping someone. Someone is overwhelmed by an issue. Someone is overwhelmed right now, like now with this idea of the COVID-19, is overwhelmed. The person does not know what to do. The person does not know who to seek, and they have decided to come to you. So we normally say, on one hand, you as a student counselor or the teacher counselor, what do you have? 
you have the knowledge, you have the expertise, you have the skills, and you have got the experience. And on this other hand, now we have the client who has got an issue. And he said in counseling, we don't talk about um, we don't talk about problems. We refer to them as issues because we know uh, issue an issue is something, it's a challenge, it's something that can be overcome. So that is the difference between you and this client. And then now you enter into a one-to-one. -one personal relationship with the client with the aim of helping this client have a positive change look at life from a different perspective we said you explore you discuss you look at the advantages look at the disadvantages if you take this measure if you take this other measure what is going to happen uh, basically that is what we defined at the term counseling to be and we said in counseling we must always remember you assured the client of confidentiality in the other lesson we had looked at qualities of a good counselor and for you to succeed in your counseling skills we said you must be able to maintain confidentiality so that the counseling process uh, can be successful. Then, what are these counseling skills? And uh, Peter Sardes defines counseling skills as that interpersonal communication skills that is derived from the study of therapeutic change in human beings. And it is used in a manner consistent with the goals and ethics of counseling skills. So, in other words, you are saying that those, the, it is those interpersonal, those communication skills that as a, as a teacher counselor you're going to use on your student, um, your student client uh, so that it is you to reflect in yourself to this student client so that you can help them to be able to open up. Uh -huh. And if they remember, if a, a client does not open up, you will not be able to seek, or you will not be able to help this client in the, in, the, in, the, in the best way possible. So it's very, very important for us to really embrace and really know which are these counseling skills that as teacher counselors we need to use or we need to have in this uh, counseling, uh, in this counseling process. And uh, we are there for saying this, that counselors have to use counseling skills. We can't do without them. We can never succeed in helping people solve their problems or solve their issues without having the right counseling skills. And uh, like when we listen to them, when we listen to people who are going through challenges, uh, when we, we give them our ear, uh, you realize that we, we say a problem shared is a problem halved. And therefore they'll be able to sort out their issues because you said in counseling we don't make decisions for clients, we let the clients make the, de uh, the decisions for themselves. So, that's something that is, uh, as, uh, as um, teacher counselors, we must always uh, be able to remember. Um, projected here is an example now of a counseling process. And you can see this is a, a boy student, uh -huh, and you can see this is a male, uh, is a male uh, counselor, and you can see that uh, they, are in, they are in a relationship. Uh, both of them, uh, they are giving each other a chance, but remember, proper or the best counseling session is where it is client centered you speak less the client speaks more for you to be able to to succeed there is also another example here i've given uh, over this could be a university student who has gone to seek counseling uh, in the counseling office and you can see that madame there uh, is a counselor and you can see the way they have sat yeah, it's so clear that this uh, counselor can be able to see the client uh, in the so-called the non -verbals. Maybe if the client is fidgeting, maybe the client is tearing, or maybe the client is crying, you can be able to identify that. And that can be a very, very good opportunity for you to be able to gather as much information uh, from this client as possible so that they can be able to sort out their, be able to sort out their issue. So going further, uh, these are some of the examples or some of the techniques that uh, my dear students you can use to be able uh, to counsel, to be able to go through the counseling process. Not necessarily in order, we have the first one here which we refer to as attending. We have another one here we refer to as reflecting and paraphrasing. Uh, then another skill or technique we can use in counseling is called summarizing. We also have to use questions in counseling. We also have to focus on what the client is saying. And we also have the uh, skill called uh, the, uh, immediacy, then rapport building, and we, have, uh, we also have silence. So these are what you can call the basic counseling skills that every effective teacher counselor needs to apply when counseling the students, uh, uh, when counseling the students in the schools, although I believe there are many more, uh, many more others. So going ahead and looking at each one of them, uh, we have the first one here that you have called attending. What is to attend? My dear student, to attend means that you are 
you in your non-verbal behaviors you are showing your physical presence uh, with this client you it means that you are offering this client company you are telling them i am with you i can able to listen to your issues you know you i am giving you my full attention i'm not only listening to you with the, with your with my ears i'm also listening to you with my heart i'm fully distracted and i'm giving you full attention into the issue that is disturbing you so proceed on and tell me that which is bothering you it's a very it's one of the values uh, techniques or one of the valuable skills when you are counseling uh, we are counseling a client so when you are telling we normally say my dear students that you normally apply what you refer to as non uh, attending behaviors we call them uh, non-verbal attending behaviors that even before you even even if you are not speaking there's something the client can see in you and you really know that you and them are together and for sure uh, you're going to assist them uh, get a solution to their problem and these non attending behaviors we usually refer to them as SORA. This is an abbreviation. S starts for something, O starts for something, S starts for something, E starts for something, and R starts for something. We can start. We can now explain, my dear student, what is a SORA mean. The first S, mm -hmm, maybe I would ask you, what do you think this S would mean? And it is you sit squarely facing the client. You sit in a way that you can be able to see the client. Going back to that example that uh, I showed you, you can be able to see that this counselor for sure stays in a way that he is able to see all the non-verbal reactions in the client. So you have to sit squarely, uh, but you must always make sure that you observe what is called physical space so that you don't just become too close. Eh? You maintain physical space, but you can be sure you are able to see everything and anything that is happening uh, in your that is happening in your client. Uh -huh. um, so you, that's what you said, you sit squarely facing the client. Then the second one is openness. Yeah, you maintain, you say, you maintain an open posture. Yeah, when you are, now that you are sat squarely, you are seeing the client in each and everything, now you maintain an open posture. What does an open posture mean? There are people who have got the habit of uh, crossing their legs sometimes, they cross their hearts, Mm -hmm. Then what I tell you, the client, you don't care, you have come to intrude in my privacy, I have no time for you. That's what happens in counseling. So what you normally say is that you maintain an open posture. We say, if possible, maintain your heart, your arms, eh? and um, you place them on your wraps, eh? on your wraps. So that now, and then you don't close your legs. You make sure that your legs are apart. That you know you are telling the client, yes, I'm ready for you. Tell me everything. Hey, I am, I am here for you. You can, I, you can discuss anything that you have with me. I'm there for you. That is what openness means. And it's a very important, uh, very, very important key. Very important and verbal behavior in counseling. Then the L means you lean forward. You lean forward. You are leaning forward to show the client what you are interested, you are concerned. Don't sit on the chair eh? and eh? in Kiswahili, who's really a kit in the counseling session. Instead, you incline your body towards the client as a sign of interest and concern. That his story, that her story, that her issue really matters and it really bothers you and you really want this person to come up with a solution to their problem. Then, number four is E. The E is you maintain eye contact. You maintain eye contact. And you say eye contact should be maintained throughout the counseling session. Don't avoid looking outside. Because when you look outside, you shall become distracted. And the reason why you are maintaining the eye contact is that you can be able to see each and everything that your client is displaying. As I said from the beginning, maybe the client is not crying, but the client is tearing. So if the tears are falling down and you're not observant enough, then it will be very, very difficult for you to be able to know what is the issue. So that once you see them tearing, or maybe you have asked them sit down, you're most welcome, and you see that this person is fidgeting, or that some things they are raising their tone, some they are roaring their tone, you need to really observe that because those will be cues in counseling to give information. Why are you crying? How can I help? You know, how can I come in? How can I make your burden lighter? You know, you are able to obtain information. I asked you to sit down, I even gave you a cup of water. But since I since I gave you the seat, you have not settled. What could be the issue? Where can I come in? Where can I help? And it's a very also very, very important and verbal behavior uh, as, as part of your attending skills. And then lastly, you relax. You can succeed, my dear student, in counseling student when you are tense. You have to be yourself. And, you, and I can tell you for sure, 
the student client can be able to see that my teacher is not settled. So be yourself, be contained, be as ordinary as possible. Yes, that you now you will not create more tension in the clan because by the time they are coming to, to see you, remember they are anxious, remember they have got tension within themselves. So when you relax, you, you make the atmosphere so calm, so cool, that the client is likely to do what? To open up and you're going to uh, get or you're going to obtain as much information as, uh, as possible. The other very important uh, technique in counseling is silence. We have to maintain silence. And you say, when you are silent in counseling, you give the client control of the content, the pace, and the objectives. We say in counseling, it is the client who knows their story. It is not you who knows the story. So talk less, listen more in counseling. You talk less, you listen more. Yes. And uh, we are saying, even when you, when you are silent, believe you me, you are listening to what the client is saying. You are giving them a chance, you are giving them a, an opportunity to be able to discuss and tell you those issues that are bothering them. Remember that silence is a way of facilitating the counseling process. That when you keep interjecting, mm -hmm, when you keep saying, I, if I were you, I would do this, you are not helping the client. Because we say in counseling, it is the client who knows the story, it is the client who knows the issue that is bothering them, and therefore it is only them who can able to come up with a solution uh, to their problem. The other thing uh, we shall do now, we have attended, we have listened, then now uh, we do what is called reflecting. First of all, we reflect and then we can paraphrase. And reflecting, as we have said, it, it is that act of listening. Uh, it is making sure that the client knows their story, that their story is being listened to. You pause, you pause, you are a silent there, and you are Whatever the client is saying, it is going through your mind. You are recording it. My dear student in, in psychology, we said uh, the mentoid is card. You have opened the mentoid is card for this client, and therefore you are encoding and you are decoding the issues that are being brought about by the client. And that's the reason why you need to be silent for you to be able to hear and to be able to, and to, be able to reflect. Then, once you have listened, and once you have reflected on the issues of the client, then you can go ahead and do what? And you repeat. You repeat, or you feed a sort of version of their story back to them. And then, we like, for example, we tell them, did I hear you correctly? Is this what you have told? That your mother is affected or infected by COVID-19. Eh? That your mother is really uh, going through a lot of pain. Did I hear you well? Is there anything else that you have not told me? And that is what is called paraphrasing. So you cannot paraphrase before you reflect. And you cannot reflect before you listen. You know, you can see the sequence. You have to listen first so that you can, uh, you can reflect and so that you can be able to paraphrase what the client has said. Eh? And so that the client can hear it now from you. So that in case there's something else, then they can tell you, uh, Marim, teacher, there's something else I haven't told you. Uh, teacher, you know, you, are, you help them listen to their words or to their issues, and then uh, they can be able to tell you more, or tell you there's something else they haven't told you, so that whatever is inside them, they're able to pour it out, because that will be the only way in which they, are, they can be able to achieve uh, the hearing process. Then the other skill we need to apply, it is called the, uh, the skill of clarifying and the use of questions, yes. Clarifying, you clarify, did I hear you well? Have you told me everything? What else have you not told me? Is that all you are clarifying? So that you are sure by the time this session is over, the 40 minutes to one hour, it is over. You have basically heard each and everything that the client has told you. And where possible then we say, you do what? You use questions. You question the client. Yes, uh -huh. you, you question the client. And in counseling we say, we don't use cross-headed questions. No, we use, we don't use the yes and no. No, we don't use those ones. You use what are called open added questions. And because I know you are doing research methods, you have been taught into details what open added questions mean. It is those questions where you ask the client for their opinion. How do you feel about this? You know, they'll tell you this is what I feel. You know, open added question. And again, we say, avoid reading. Mm -hmm. Don't ask reading questions where they just tell you yes. Mm -hmm. So you, so this is the way you are not, um, so you are not performing well in mathematics. You know, that's a reading question. Then the, the student will tell you, yes, teacher, I'm not performing well. Um, 
Muslims idea. You have any of the client? No. So you say you use open-ended questions so that you can be able to gain or get as much information from the client as possible. At the same time, my dear student, avoid using threatening questions. If you don't tell me today, you know, now are you helping? That's not nice. That's no, not a counseling session. So we say you also avoid what you call a threatening. Uh, they should always be avoided at any given time in any uh, in any counseling in any counseling session. Then. Having uh, clarified, having asked all the questions possible, having obtained all the information, having paraphrased, then now you can do what is called focusing. Very important skill. The reason is, this student client may have so many issues. Teacher, I'm not performing well in mathematics. Teacher, no, my mother is infected. Teacher, my dad is also not feeling well like a diabetic. Uh, teacher, I'm in collision with, uh, with, other, with other students in class. You can see all those are so many issues. But in counseling, what we are told, we always, uh, we always do as the, teach, as the counselors, it is you have to narrow down. You have to narrow down to only basically one issue. Yes, I've listened to you all, you know what you've told me, but I want to believe that what is really bothering you at this moment in time, it is this coronavirus. You know, not issues of performance, not issues of the family, not issues of the um, relationship with others. You narrow down to the actual issue that is bothering the client. So the client may have mentioned a range of issues and problems and focusing around the counselor and the client together to clear away some of the less important surrounding material and concentrate on the central issues of concern. So when you focus, we shall concentrate on that which is really bothering the client and put aside anything else that can come in but that could know that uh, is likely not to be the actual issue that is uh, bothering, the, bothering the client. Then another important uh, technique, my dear student, we need to emphasize is on the one of building rapport. You can never succeed in counseling when you are in a poor relationship with your client. And that has become one of the challenges which you're going to realize when you go to the high schools. Well, that uh, at one time you are a class teacher, at one time you are, you are, you are a subject teacher, at other time you are a teacher on duty. And sometimes there are those um, issues that may come about that may make you sometimes be on collision path with the student. You may not be able to succeed very well because you need to have a very good relationship with your client. Yeah, a relationship. You know, uh, from the way you greet the student, from the politeness, from telling the client is welcome, maintain that calmness, being cool as a teacher counselor, all that plays a very, very important role in the ability of the client uh, to be able to open up and tell you what are those issues that are really, that are really bothering them. So it is very important for us to really build a good relationship with our client so that they can be able to sort out their issues and they can be able to live a positive life because the essence of counseling is to enable someone not necessarily solve a hundred percent of their problem but at least be able to have a positive change so that at least you can even say minimize even these cases you're having of suicide minimize the cases that you're hearing of depression and people be able to cope up with their day-to-day -day, their day-to-day -day lives uh, or issues then the other important skill we refer to it as summarizing you summarize yeah, and you say in summarizing it's not paraphrasing it is you press together you condense all that information that is coming from the client you condense it uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you condense or crystallize the essence of what the client is saying and feeling. So in summarizing, we say you sum up the main themes that are emerging. I have been able to hear that one of the issues that you are going through, it is this issue of the disease. Maybe how you are going to uh, protect yourself or how you are going to go about it. You summarize the main themes so that, as we said, you, you are focusing and avoiding uh, that which may not be uh, very, very, very necessary. Then another important skill... Another important technique, as we come to the head, it is a technique of immediacy. Immediacy, from the word immediate. Immediacy has to do with here and now. And immediacy is not coming from the client, immediacy is coming from you as the teacher counselor. What is, that, what is that you are noting in your client? What is that you can observe? Maybe the client is trying to give information and then they are posting. They are passing and they are not willing to release all the information. So you use that to challenge the client. What else have you not told me? From what I can see from your non you have not told me everything. So immediately you ask the client, speak it out. 
Immediacy means that if you observe anything that is negative in the client, don't keep quiet. Like that example I gave you last week where I was telling you that the client may come to your office and maybe there's a very nice carpet. It's a hot afternoon. And then the client decides maybe to remove their shoes and maybe obvious. In a hot afternoon, most likely the shoes are not fresh. You cannot force yourself to tell the client continue on, even in this midst of all these calamities. You have to tell the client, I'm sorry, we cannot be able to proceed on. Please take back in your shoes and then for us to be able to proceed on with them with the council session. If, if not that, you may realize that maybe there's some form of closeness that is developing between you and the client. Tell the client, maintain your distance and maintain my distance. We can't continue like this. And if you notice the client is continuing to misbehave, then we normally say you cancel the contract and then now you can refer the client to you can refer the client to someone else. So it is we are saying immediately is that that key skill of focusing the attention on the here and now uh, in as far as, uh, in as, far as uh, the counseling uh, session is uh, concerned. Now, as we uh, come to the end of our lesson, we are asking ourselves, in order for us to be successful, what are some of those very important points that we need to consider as this counseling process is going on? What is it that we need to consider? And one of them, my dear student, is we have to be genuine. We have to be genuine. If, for example, you do not understand an issue coming from the client, seek for clarification. If there is something a client has asked you, like uh, that example I gave you the other week, and uh, maybe the student has come to you and has asked you, uh, Marim, maybe you are a female teacher and this is a girl student, a girl client, a student client, a girl, telling you, Marim, I'm expectant. And I would really want your advice concerning, uh, can you really guide me where I can go and procure an abortion? And as a teacher counselor, we say you are a genuine, you are a pro-life. Obviously, there's no way you can go ahead and tell this student, go wherever. You are going to tell the student, I am pro-life. I believe that as we retain the pregnancy, you give birth to a child, and then you can, shall be able to proceed back with the school. Tell the student that according to the Minister of Education, giving birth these days is not an issue. You know, the most important issue is continuing your education. Those are some of the things. As a teacher counselor, you need to be genuine, even in this counseling relationship. And be honest. Be a person of integrity. Don't deny the client. If it can be done, it can be done. If it cannot be done, just be genuine and tell the client uh, how things are as they are. If they are white, they are white. If they are black, they are black. Maintain that uh, for the counseling se uh, session to be successful. Then, try to be brief. Don't uh, give a lot of stories. Be, be very brief when you are reflecting back. Yeah, when you are reflecting back, huh? yeah, let the client do most of the talking. Don't talk more. Talk less. We said from the beginning, you listen more, you talk less, so that you give the client the chance uh, to be able to, to, to say each and everything that is bothering them. And then, when you are reflecting again, use your own words to reflect back. Don't, uh, don't, uh, it's, not a, it's not a poem eh? that you are re repeating word after word about what the client has said. No. You reflect back, you speak back, using your own words. Uh -huh. My dear student, did I hear you correctly? Is this what you have told me? Is this what you are going through? Use your own words. Don't be a parrot. No, don't be a parrot. So use your own words to reflect on what the client is saying. And then, the other very important and the last one is, avoid, avoid using a shocked or disbelieving tone of voice. Yeah, avoid, um, avoid using a shocked or a disbelieving tone of voice. Yes. So do not, um, do not appear shocked. Uh, we said you need to be relaxed, you need to be yourself. Even if the student has brought you an issue that you feel is so difficult, an issue that you don't even know uh, really what is it, you, ha you have to contain and be yourself. Don't go beyond, I mean, don't appear, don't appear this, because the, the, the client has come to you seeking for help. So when you show them that you are shocked, that they have brought you that issue, what are you telling them? That maybe there can never be a hurt, eh? there can never be a solution to their problem. So with the key thing is, be as, as flexible, be as relaxed, as possible so that the uh, counseling process can be able to uh, go on as possible. Now, before I tell you the topic that you're going to discuss next, as you know all the time, we always divide ourselves into groups of five. So for my assignment, I am asking you that uh, you know your groups, that you group yourself into groups of five, and then you discuss other 
other other counseling skills, other techniques that you can able to uh, incorporate on top of this. And uh, as you agree, uh, that is part of your assignment. I'll be able to pick that assignment and I'll be able to give a score uh, for that uh, because you shall have presentation uh, when you come next uh, for our lesson. Then our next lesson will be on the life skills. So even then, before we meet, uh, prepare on that uh, so that uh, you are aware of us and we shall make uh, my work and your work easy and our progress within the university will be better. Uh, thank you for listening to me and may God bless you and keep you until we meet again. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.